Hello, I'm Nin the Bob, and this is a video going about what's it like to be autistic. This is a very different thing to know what it is autism, and what's it actually like living as an autistic person. So, let's get into it. It should be noted that I am a white cisgendered person living in a country of free healthcare so my experiences are going to be different to other people's and my experiences are probably going to be very easy compared to other people's so that should be noted. My previous video I talked about what it is autism and that was done using my phone camera with a really bad microphone. Now my lovely sister is out to buy me a new camera and I've got an okay microphone so hopefully this one should be more legible be able to be listened to and won't require subtitles to be able to understand well that's probably gonna happen anyway because Irish so when did I get autism I was born with it uh, there seems to be a you know a proclivity for autism in my family so because I have a sibling that's also been formally diagnosed autism as well as my dad probably has it, but we don't know for sure. And he's just like, he can't be arsed to get it actually formally diagnosed. So he's just like, whatever. We're an interesting family. I've never really thought about it. What's it actually like to have autism? Uh, it's just, this is the way I've always been. I've never known anything differently. I've always been autistic I've always been me the only difference is that when I got formally diagnosed with autism I had a name for why I was different there was a what was making me different compared to other people that I knew and that my peers as a baby I was quite happy and quite outgoing like I even won a contest for a bonnie baby contest this is like 1993, 94, so this is an era ago. Before times, we only had three channels. No, I, my linguistic skills were fine as a child. In fact, that's what uh, Asperger syndrome used to be differing from regular vanilla autism, <laughs> is that uh, children with Asperger syndrome, or what, what used to be known as Asperger syndrome, had no linguistic delay early in childhood, so that's what differed them from children with autism, autism. So I was, yeah, I was quite outgoing. I was a easy baby, slept a lot, which is pretty consistent. That's a characteristic consistent right up to this day. I can sleep like 12 hours, like it's nobody's business nowadays. I got along well with other kids pretty earlier on, I was fine. I was like, I socialised, I found no problem with socialisation and I got along with other kids fine and it was, there was nothing really differing me from other kids until I got a bit older because when you're like, before you hit your teens, like you're, when you're like in late childhood, you just kind of like, you get along with everyone. There's no intricate social standards for you to abide by. I, in primary school, or what the Americans would call elementary school, I did quite well socially. I got along well with pretty much everyone and there wasn't really any big difference between me and non-autistic kids. I went to an all-girls school, so that was all-girls Catholic school. All-girl Catholic school. All girls Irish Catholic school, so that was funzo. And it was only about when I was about 11 or 12 that I started realizing, ooh, I'm not like normal kids. When I was about, I'm trying to think about how old was I? When I was 11, my, uh, brother was diagnosed with autism, with Asperger's syndrome, and that was the first time I'd ever really heard about it. Like, I probably had an awareness of what autism was around that age, but I never really thought about it. Like when my brother was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, my parents had never even heard of it. 
like this would have been in 2004 2004 before a lot of people watching this probably were even born and it was like we didn't know what it was we had no idea what it was the we weren't linked up to the internet at the time so we had no idea what autism entailed and we didn't know what it meant all i knew was that my brother had it and as far as i knew i didn't have it i didn't have it i wasn't confirmed to have it so it wasn't really that big of a deal to me my brother was had autism and that was it like i think at one point i watched rain man which is not a great movie to watch when you're only about 11 and i started crying because i identified with dustin hoffman's character which should have been uh should have been a foreshadowing like there were little things that kind of stood out as me being different like for example i didn't learn how to tie shoelaces until i was about 13 because my brain just could not parse it like my hands wouldn't do the thing that i want them to do and tie the shoelaces <laughs> like you couldn't follow instructions on it so it was difficult uh i only learned because my teacher at the time she taught me how to tie shoelaces using a toy that she had gotten from the infants class and she had me do it over and over again until I figured out how to do it so Rita Spring Saint she that was she was the greatest teacher I ever had when I was about 12 or 13 uh, a psychologist slash psychiatrist or something came to my school and wanted to talk to me and I was brought into a little room and she talked to me and was asking me questions like uh, do I have friends? Uh, what's my favourite TV show? and things like that and uh, did an IQ test on me which I now know was an IQ test and she gave me a bar of chocolate and sent me back to class and I remember everyone in my class being so ticked off because I got to eat chocolate in class and this was like wow wow and they were, they were like why does she get to eat chocolate in class and we don't and my teacher was like she's been through a lot and I was like I, I was I, I went through a lot I don't know I, I just sat there and she asked me questions I told her that one of my favorite shows at the time was South Park and I was 11 Ugh. what I didn't know was that my parents had suspicions that I was on the spectrum because I liked following ritual uh, because I like things being a certain way uh, I liked reading the crazy amount of reading I started reading quite young uh, I read everything I could find like back of shampoo bottles instruction manuals anything I could get my hands on I loved reading like, crazy loved reading I don't get to do it that much these days because internet and also my attention span is blitzed like it's I have no attention span which is why it took three months for me to get from one video to another which I hope to remedy hope, next video I'm hoping to make is gonna be about disability in cavemen so hopefully that'll be along very very soon I'm hoping to do two videos a week hopefully because it turns out that that psychiatrist or psychologist or whatever was testing me for autism they were trying to assess whether or not I was on the spectrum and their results were that I wasn't on the spectrum. I was just eccentric. I was just a, a weird kid, basically. Uh, little did I know that would make next few years quite hard on me. As you can expect, early adolescence can be quite terrible. <laughs> and I went into secondary school which Americans would know as high school uh, not knowing if I was autistic or not in fact I, I knew I wasn't because I had been told I wasn't as things got more and more complicated social relationship wise because it, being a teenager is complicated as hell I began to realise that there was something going on that marked me as different. And I, 
I didn't know what it was. I just thought I was weird. I thought I was a freak <laughs> because that's how I was being treated. I didn't act like other people did. Like I wanted to, to blend in. I really wanted to blend in and be normal and do the stupid things that other teenage girls got to do. Like have boyfriends and follow trends and go out and socialize and go to parties and do stupid things and drink cider in a field like normal teenage girls do. But I wasn't normal. I hung around a bunch of other people who were outcasts. They were really good friends to me for all those years. Friends in the way that soldiers in the trenches are friends kind of thing. Like I haven't really kept in contact with any of them in the years since I left school. We are friends on Facebook, but that's, that's literally about it. And as anyone who's ever experienced that kind of age group should know, is that things get very, very different when you're a teenager in secondary school versus when you weren't a teenager and you were just starting off in school. There's way more focus on social aspects and social intricacies and social rituals that can be lost on you if you don't understand why they happen and the purpose behind them. I went to secondary school thinking that I wasn't autistic. I just thought I was weird. I knew I was different in some way. I didn't know in what way, but I knew I was different. And there wasn't really any way I could figure out why I was different. I was bullied. <laughs> I was bullied a bit. And... The thing about being bullied is that the person doing it might not even recognize that they're doing it, or it might not even show up on their radar as being something to self-examine whereas when you're the person being bullied it's it's everything it's destroying it just destroys your soul and it it leaves a mark years and years later like this is literally half my lifetime ago and i can remember things that happened it just wasn't, wasn't anything terrible, it was like name calling. My eyes are watering because onions were being cooked. And <laughs> that's legitimately not an excuse, that's the actual truth. Um, is my mic even on? Yeah, it's on. Uh, during, during my time in secondary school, my mental health took quite a dip. Like a really, really bad dip. Um, it was so bad that I, I genuinely can't remember a lot of secondary school. Son of a bitch. Um, I was getting daily panic attacks. Pretty much daily panic attacks. Uh, I was missing a lot of school because, um, I was a bit of an overachiever, but at the same time, I didn't really care. I have, I got along well with my teachers and I, my work was all right. Like at first I was like stray, st completely stray. Even in the subjects I hated, I was a stray a student. But as time went on, I found myself more spending time in the library during lunches and not really wanting to talk to people. And I was sad all the time. And thanks to my uh, general practitioner, they got me linked in with a child mental health service which is called CAMS here in Ireland and they were wonderful so for pretty much my entire time in secondary school between the ages of 13 and 18 I was linked in with mental health services because I my mental health was so badly affected by, by not getting any support for my, what we now know was autism it sucked it sucked. It really did suck. Oh my god, it sucked. When I was about 17, my uh, mental health nurse listened 
to me when I said, I think I have autism. I think there's, that's the only logical way that I could be like this. And she said, okay, we'll, we'll link you in. For a few weeks, they were running assessments on me and asking me questions, like trivia questions and maths questions. At one point, they put a table full of toys in front of me to see which ones I would naturally gravitate to, and it was mostly the sensory toys that I gravitated to. So, uh, the day they told me I had Asperger's syndrome, what was back then known as Asperger's syndrome, now it's conglomerated into the autistic spectrum disorder umbrella. Um, I remember them telling me, oh yeah, you've, yeah, you've Asperger's syndrome. And I remember my mom was sitting on a couch next to me and I started crying. I remember I just, I, my entire body just kind of, I started bawling, crying. Like it was ridiculous. I was screaming, crying because I had been misdiagnosed for five years. And th those five years can make a lot of difference developmentally. There is a vast difference between a 13 year old and a 17 slash 18 year old. And because I was so old getting diagnosed, I wouldn't be getting any of the child services available for children with autism. I, I would have to be switched out to the adult services. And that never happened. I never got any support and I still haven't, which is why I'm doing this stuff because I think adults with autism and everyone with autism deserves to be helped. I remember for a very long time I was very angry. I was so angry. <laughs> like the, the first thing I did when we went, stepped outside the centre where I got diagnosed, I remember I punched the wall. I think I punched the wall a couple of times. I was so angry and I was so bitter and what made it worse was that I understood everything. That I was different to other kids and there was no way of fixing it. That this was the way I was and the way I've always been and I would always be. So for Quite a while after I got my autism diagnosis, I was quite angry and bitter, if I'm being perfectly honest. Because in my mind, I was like, why me? Why did I have to be autistic? Why did I have to have this on top of everything else? Like, I wanted to be normal. I wanted to just be a normal teenager worrying about normal stuff. I wanted to live life like everyone else around me was. I remember saying to my mental health nurse that would this mean that I would never have children or get married or fall in love or have a normal life? And for a while that's what I thought was going to be the way. I really thought that was how things are going to turn out. I didn't want to be living with my parents for the rest of my life. I didn't want to need support for the rest of my life. And then I went to National Learning Network here in Ireland and that's an, a service for adults with disabilities. Help them learn how to adult, basically. And I had a great time out there. I spent two years out there. And it basically was everything from teaching you how to do interviews well and how to cook for yourself or <laughs> things like that. It was it was wonderful. It taught me how to be more independent and how to take care of myself, basically. And it was a massive amount of help and I got so much support and so much counselling that I needed that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And when I left there, I did, I fluttered about for a bit. I, I did flutter about for about, about five years? Five year, yeah, five years. Uh, I did a year course in TV and film production, a year course in advanced multimedia web design. It's 
spent about two, three years off because I got quite ill. And now I'm on my first year in a third level education. I'm in a college, I'm in a proper college, <laughs> which is quite rare for a person with autism. Autism and college don't meld that well together, but somehow I managed, thanks to amazing parents and amazing family, it has taken me a long time to learn how to pretend not to be autistic. Because of my anger and because of my bitterness, I kind of shied away from actually acknowledging it and being proud of being autistic. I learned how to maintain eye contact, I learned how to be sociable, I, I had to learn everything that comes naturally to other people. And it was difficult and it was hard. It was super hard. So, what's it like being an adult with autism? Well, um, good question. I have issues with knowing how to upkeep social relationships. Like, do I text them now? Do I ring them now? Uh, what should I say? How do you just ask someone to go out for a drink? <laughs> Things like that. It's, it's like trying to put together a bit of furniture, but the manual you have isn't in your primary language. So that's kind of difficult, but it's always something to keep on learning and something to keep on improving. I think everyone has that problem though, so I'm not special in that regards. I'm special in every other regards because I'm brilliant. Yeah. Instead of being ashamed or angry at being autistic, more nowadays that I've accepted myself, I've accepted that I have autism and that there's nothing wrong with being autistic. It's just another thing that's part of me. It's another aspect of my personality. And I wouldn't change it for the world because maybe my life hasn't turned out as different as I hoped it would be. Yeah, I'm in my late 20s and I still live with my parents. So what? Lots of people do nowadays. This economy? <laughs> uh, I've had romantic relationships. I've got some good friends that I could easily go out for a drink with if we weren't in lockdown. And I'm doing really well in college, thanks to my teachers being wonderful and my family being wonderful, even though we're in lockdown, it's all distance learning. And I'm currently studying social, <laughs> I'm currently studying social care work, which is kind of hilarious to me. This person who has a disorder that does not recognize social boundaries or social norms is studying social work and sociology and psychology. It's <laughs> kind of like studying a language that you don't speak, sort of, but thanks to my experiences with autism and how much is affected me over my life and how much is impacted my, my life it's because of all this that I want to help other people with autism because I want them to know they're not alone. It may feel isolating and it may feel difficult, but it's not something to be ashamed of. It's not something to worry about. It's not something to resent and something to be angry about you've every right to be angry and you've every right to be annoyed and bitter like I was but you should know that there's always going to be a light at the end of the tunnel and that being autistic isn't a detriment and that being autistic is something to be proud of because god damn it you've gotten this far and that you should be proud so 
thank you all for watching and hopefully my next video isn't too much <laughs> hopefully it's later on this week i want to do a video on uh history of disability so hopefully i'll get around to doing two videos a week and i'll get around to recording that later on in the week so thank you very much for watching this far and like comment and subscribe and whatever other stuff you have to do and if there's anyone that wants sponsorships out there i'm in i will sell out <laughs>